In this video, we are going to talk about alkanes that are the simplest class of organic compounds. We are going to talk about their isomers, how to name them, and their conformations. First, let's get started with isomers. What are isomers? Isomers are substances that have the same number and the same kind of atoms, but arranged on different ways. So let's get started with the first example and move on. Let's get started with isomers first. So draw three isomers with the formula C6H14. So first let's write a straight chain of carbons with six carbons as the molecular formula said. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Connect them together and make sure that you fill all the 14 hydrogens and make sure that each carbon will have four bonds. Otherwise, it's wrong. This needs three hydrogen, two hydrogens. We can branch, for example, to the carbon two. So add another carbon here and remove one from here. So one, two, three, four, five. One is here and fill them with hydrogens. This needs one because it has three bonds, CH2. Can we write another isomer as the exercise one? Yes. We can add another carbon here, add the carbon two, but make sure that you are moving another carbon here that remains only four. One, two, three, four, five, six. And fill them with hydrogens. Always make sure that you have 14 hydrogens. For example, here, 3 plus 2, 5 plus 3, 8 plus 3, 11 plus 3, 14. So you have to make sure that carbon has four bonds and you have to make sure that you have given the same number of hydrogen that is in the molecular formula. I know that you may want now to give the name for this compound, but first let's learn some basics for alkanes, how to name them. After that, we will come back again to give the names for these compounds for alkanes. So alkanes, the general formula for alkanes are, is CN is CN H2N plus 2 with a suffix ane. So the first 10 ones you need to memorize. They are composed by the Greek numbers met at prop boot that means the number of carbon that contain, is contained in the molecular formula. For example, methane, one carbon, ethane, two carbons, propane, three carbons, butane, four carbons, and so on. Pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, decane. You need to memorize this. There is no other option. All right, so this is the first family of the alkanes that are not branched. If we remove one hydrogen from methane, for example, it is converted to an alkyl group that we call this methyl. So from the suffix "-ane", we go to the suffix "-il", okay? So for all other compound, if you have ethane, it will go ethyl, uh, a group that is going to be connected to a parent chain that we will see below. Uh, Propan, propyl here, and butan, butyl and so on. There is also another class of compounds that needs to be memorized that are traditionally named on that way. For example, propan, we name it propyl if we remove one hydrogen. But if we write that on this way, it has a name that is called isopropyl. The name for sure should come from the two equivalent CH3 bonded to the carbon. For butan, butyl, sec butyl, so in this case, it's connected to the second carbon. Again, you need to memorize. There is no other way to remember all this. Write them several times and you will memorize them. So isobutyl here and uh, tert butyl. Something to keep in mind when we are going to write names for alkenes, only the iso suffix is the one that is considered in the alphabetic order for the substituent in the parent chain. Okay, others like sec or tert or what else are not considered in the alphabetic order. 
So it's, it starts from B, starts from uh, B here. But this one starts from I, okay? We will see what I mean. Let's move to something else that you need to know about the carbon. Carbon, this R here, is the rest of the molecule, the symbol. Carbon can be classified as primary carbon, secondary carbon, tertiary carbon, and quaternary carbon. For this one, that is connected with the rest of the molecule, this is considered primary carbon. This one that is connected with two substituent, other than hydrogen, is secondary carbon. This one is a tertiary carbon, that is because it's connected with three other compounds com other than hydrogen. This one is a quaternary carbon. We have the same analogy for hydrogens. This one here is a primary hydrogen. This one here is a secondary hydrogen. Because the carbon is connected with two other components here. This one here is a tertiary hydrogen. Do we have a quaternary hydrogen? What do you think? Leave that in the comment below if we have a quaternary hydrogen. Uh, let's move now to name the alkanes. First, we are going to see the case that they give the description and you have to write the structure. And the second case is going to be that they give the structure and you have to write the description. So, for the first one, point A, I think it's simple. Start from the parent name, that is heptene. So, the reason I, why I said to you that you have to memorize from 1 to 10, because always you have to have something like a parent name that you need to know the number of carbons that are included. Heptane means that, for point A I mean, you have to write, heptane is 7 carbons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Connect them all together. 1, 2, 3, name them, give them numbers, 5, 6, 7. And connect the methyl group to the second carbon, that is here. Methyl is nothing else than a methane molecule removed one hydrogen. And this, and fill others with hydrogen, this needs one, to satisfy the four bonds for the carbon. And this is the, the 2 methyl heptane. Let's move to the second one, point B. We have octane. Octane stands for 8 carbons. So you have to write as a straight chain 8 carbons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Connect them all together. Give them numbers. and add the substituent to the numbered position. So ethyl is, a, is at position 4, so it's here, and ethyl is an attain with minus 1 hydrogen. What do we have else? We have dimethyl here. As you can see, ethyl in, is in alphabetical order before the methyl, because E is before M, but D is not considered because it corresponds to the number, except only for ISO, as I said, that we have an example to point C. So now what we are going to do, we are going to add 3 to the position 3, 4 dimethyl groups. So we have two methyls to add to the position 3, 4. He one here, and one is going to be added here. And let's fill them all with hydrogens to satisfy the four bonds for the uh, carbon. All right, let's move now to the point C. We have heptane. Heptane is seven carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Give them numbers. Six, seven. We have four isopropyl. So you have to memorize what is isopropyl. Otherwise, how you have to know to write it. So at the position four, connect all these carbons. You need to write isopropyl, that is, a carbon connected with two metal groups and one hydrogen here to satisfy the four bonds for carbon. We have also three methyl, so methyl at the position three, we have a methyl here. And let's fill now with hydrogens to satisfy the four bonds for the 
carbon. All right, so now let's move to the most difficult one in this case. So this case is nona. So nona is for nine carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. At the position five, nonan has this compound that is itself substituted, branched. So at the position one, two, three, four, five, at the position five, we have one, two dimethyl propyl. So propyl is the parent, like the propyl is the parent chain between this parenthesis compound. So one, two, three carbons. And uh, we have 1, 2 dimethyl to the position 1, 2. So we have 1 here and 1 here. Start adding the substituent to the 1 close to the parent chain. So it's 1 here and 1 here. So CH3 and uh, we have uh, 2 methyl. So at the position 2 we have another methyl group and let's connect them all and fill with hydrogens since these are alkanes they are saturated they do not have double or triple bond let's move now to the beginning that we write some isomers to do the opposite now you have the structure to give the name so in the first case are six carbons so the name is going to be hexane. Hexanein. To the second one, we have a metal group at the position 2, 1, 2. Start numbering to give the smallest number of the substituent. So in this case, it's going to be 2 methyl. What is remaining to the parent? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pentane. This is the name for this one. And let's move to this one. We have two substituents. Parent chain, one, two, three, four. Four is butane. So it's going to be at the position two, one, two. We have two, two, D methyl butane. This is the name for this compound. Before I move to the confirmations, I'm giving this example here. If you can name it, write it down in the comments down below. I will check if you name it correct or not. Let's move now to the confirmations. Confirmations are a concept that are going to move us in the future videos about the stereochemistry, or in other words, the three-dimensional shape of the molecule. So the most used one are Newman projections. So first you need to write the compound. So the compound is butane, two methyl butane. So one, two, three, four carbons. One, two, three, four carbons. Fill a branched metal here. The exercise said that carbon two and carbon three that are going to be at the center of the plane. So what we are going to write. A three line like this, here is a carbon that is the carbon at C2, at the position of C2. So is this carbon here and write a cycle here and at the cycle is that is behind this carbon is the carbon at C3 this carbon here so at the carbon at C2 is connected one methyl group another methyl group and another hydrogen the exercise said write the most stable and the less stable conformations in order to write the most stable we are going to keep the groups as far as possible with each other so at the carbon at uh, C3, we are going to add, because we have two hydrogens and one methyl group. One hydrogen we are going to add here, another hydrogen we are going to add here, and another, and, and the methyl group we are going to add that here. This is also called staggered conformation. There is another one that is called eclipsed conformation. So on that way, we need to place as close as possible the atoms. On that way, let's draw for this compound. Again, the same structure. Add a cycle here. Add the hydrogen and the metal groups as before. But now, let's place 
this one close to a metal group and uh, the other hydrogens close to other hydrogen and this close to this one. So here we have steric strains and that's why this is the less stable compound, eclipsed conformation. Okay? All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Peace. What are isomers? Isomers are substances that has the same molecular formula, but what do you want? I want my potatoes. <laughs> Take them and go away because we are recording. First, let's get started with isomers. Isomers are substances that have the same number of... What the same number? What I am saying? First, let's get started with isomers. Isomers are substances that has the same number of... Formulae. Oh my god, we simple. Why confuse that?